Welcome to another Adventures in Business episode where we're joined by the multi-talented Justin Darnell Comedy. He's an entrepreneur and creator based in Sayersville, Kentucky. Justin has become a beloved figure in his community, not just for his hilarious comedy skits on TikTok, but also for his commitment to creating job opportunities for people in the area. Throughout this conversation, we'll dive into Justin's journey as an entrepreneur and explore how his passion for comedy has driven him to become an important voice in Sayersville. We'll also discuss his dedication to community building and how he's working to create positive change throughout his various ventures. So get ready for a fun and insightful conversation with Justin Darnell. We're going to learn more about his unique approach to entrepreneurship, his love for comedy, and his unwavering commitment to making a difference in the lives of those around him. Enjoy. I was wanting to open a mini donut truck, but a mobile meth lab sounds a lot. Yeah, better. we'll get into your mini donut truck later. But I uh, appreciate you letting me be at your house today, man. This is great. No, this is this is very nice. It's Took very us a little bit to here. set up. Um, you know, we were supposed to start a little bit earlier, but took me forever to get things going no worries <laughs> I, had to keep, I had to put my dog in the garage one of my dogs in the garage as it was very boring yeah justin has probably 10 dogs up here i don't know how many i, I have four <laughs> okay four four dogs four. and three cats four dogs three cats any other animals uh very regularly coming up here you'll see turkey deer rabbits snakes it is it is definitely the woods and if i move the camera like five feet that way you would see probably 70 bags of mulch yeah yeah way too many bags of mulch i think my significant other put in the measurement i'm gonna blame her at least but she got way too much mulch for what we needed it looks great though thanks yeah yeah it's you're doing great with it appreciate you did you pick out all the nope. flowers for it, uh yeah the plants? actually i did um the only thing i picked out or my only criteria was were they animal safe <laughs> as the audience is finding i'm kind of an animal nut job uh, but that was really my only requirements. You know, we were kind of worried about that with our dog. Uh, I guess hostas are poisonous to animals mm -hmm. or dogs, um, but it never seems to bother Penny. She doesn't really like eat it though either. My dogs so. will eat uh, poop, uh, nails, rocks. So it's 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 a lot of uh, being very careful. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they must have some really good digestive I, I, systems. I don't know what's up with them, but it's it's the air here. It's different. It's the amphetamines. <laughs> So, did you grow up here in McGoffin County? Tell me a little bit about your uh, childhood. Uh, born and raised in McGoffin. Um, I, this is not a desire to get sympathy or anything, but I think my story is interesting that I was very poor growing up, like low-income housing, um, food stamps, trailer parks, all that jazz. <laughs> I, I brought back a memory, actually. I guess this was my first stab at being an entrepreneur was back when food, you remember when food stamps were real money, they look like monopoly money. Yeah. 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 So, uh, one of the low income housing projects I lived in had a gas station within walking distance. So I would take my mom's food stamps and take like a dollar food stamps. And back then you could get like a 10 cent cake, mm -hmm. like a little, little Debbie cake or something. And it makes you sound a lot older than I am, <laughs> but like, and they would give you real money. And they'd give you like 90 cents real money. So I'd get 90 cents. I'd walk out. I'd walk back in, do the same thing. Repeat, repeat, go buy a video game or go to Pizza Hut or something like that. And eventually they, you know, made the EBT cards right. and whatnot and really lowered the value of food stamps. Because now it's like $100 in food stamps is worth about $50 in American currency. So <laughs> they really hurt the market on me there. <laughs> so then I had to open businesses. So you, uh, you're how old? You're, th you're in 32. your 30s, right? 32. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you, so let's go back to your childhood. You grew up in McGoffin County. Yep. Have you been here basically your whole life? Essentially, I went to Morehead State University for about a year. Um, okay. I think out of the 30 credits that I attempted, I completed three. One of them was like a nonsense class, like MSU studies or something. I think I'm, I think I might have done a completed a philosophy class, uh, but. You seem like a philosopher. I could see that because <laughs> I wanted to be an attorney. And um, when I went there to the Soars Day, like their, I don't know, come see MSU Day, one of the professors convinced me to major in philosophy because at the time the best performing majors for the LSAT were philosophy majors. I started that, fell in love with it, wanted to be an attorney, eventually wanted to be a philosophy professor, uh, got put on academic probation after one year as a horrible addict um, and never went to class and eventually dropped out of there. 
went to Big Sandy, the local community college. It took me, I think, seven plus years to get an associate's degree. So it's never okay. too late to do something that will not help you in your life at all. <laughs> so you were basically, you're going uh, on and off to school for a while mm-hmm. to okay. finish up at Big Sandy? Sure, a bunch of little different jobs. Um, I fancied myself a factotum, which is a word I learned from a Bukowski novel. Mm-hmm. Really into Bukowski at one point in my life okay. because that was, have you read any Bukowski? No. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost, it's cliche at this point, but uh, definitely characterized my life at that time. Um, a lot of job to job, uh, woman to woman, drug to drug, drink to drink, kind of, kind of that lifestyle for a very long time. And you've been, you've been clean for quite about a two, while. About now. two and a half years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I bet you feel so much better. Life is much better than it was for sure. Um, in a lot of ways. Um, one interesting thing, and I think there's a lot of stigma about being an addict and I try to tell people that there's no need for the stigma mm-hmm. because honestly, When you take drugs away from an addict and give them something else to focus on, that singularity of purpose and that drive, you can move mountains. Mm -hmm. So I replaced my drug addiction with an addiction for business and and money and and more productive things. Yeah. So it served me well. Yeah, definitely. Because you've got, let's see, one, two, three businesses now, plus your TikTok channel. Let's see. We've got the... The smoke shop, the coffee shop, the Maddie taxi. I've got oh, a, four. Yeah, I forgot about the taxi. I've, I've got the not. I've got the. Um, oh, what do we call it? It's the real estate holding company. It's yeah. a business only in name. It doesn't bring money. It just holds the the property that me and a business partner bought, and then plans for the mini donut truck, and then the social media channel. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's your favorite part about being a business owner? Um. Well. It's changed because I've learned to automate and delegate in the last year, I'd say. Yeah. Because before then, I was putting in many, many hours a day, you know, 16 hours a day. And it was, it's not fun. You know, back when I was an EMT, you could clock in, even if I was working 72 hour shifts, you relinquish autonomy, you do what you're supposed to do, and then you leave, and they knew not to call me because I wouldn't come in. So you had a lot of freedom at that time. I was still in active addiction. So I just stayed messed up the whole time. Mm -hmm. But now that I've learned to automate, delegate and power my employees to make decisions for me, there's just, there's freedom. Yeah. Um, Outside of that, being able to employ people, give people jobs and really help the community. And I know that also sounds um, insincere, but I really do want to see this area grow. Like this is home and everyone leaves or at least a lot of the younger generation. And, I don't think you have to leave. I mean, if they, they can see how beautiful this place is, um, I think maybe more people would want to stay, but when you've got to find work, you've got to leave. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, if you went to work tomorrow, where would you go to work? I'd get a disability check. I don't think I'd work. (laughs) I don't want to, I don't, I don't think I want to work. So it's like, sometimes if there's not a job available for you to do or that you want to do, it's like, sometimes you've got to create something, you know, uh, that's going to give you fulfillment. And it seems like that's the path that you've chosen. I think so. And I am attempting to find meaning. Um, and there is some meaning to be found in it in helping your community and improving yourself. And, Money's always nice. It's mm-hmm. it's nice to take a lot. You of, like them greenbacks? Now. I do like greenbacks. <laughs> and I, you know, I saw a video um, that my my significant other sent to me today. And it's, we're trying to still figure out what to call her. <laughs> I don't like saying her name's Sarah, and I don't like saying girlfriend <laughs> because just, I'm 32. We can't call her Sarah because that's my sister. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> hey, you can't call her Sarah. I like I don't like girlfriend, woman, friend, partner. None of those sound good. Uh, I think the woman, the woman is what people around here call okay. their female counterpart. So the woman, so the woman sent me a video. Wait, you're saying wa- woman? W- woman, I guess W O M E R N. Woman, woman, uh, woman in there. Okay. <laughs> and uh, one of the the greatest things about having even a monicum of of money is in the financial stability is the the lack of stress that it brings. Yeah, like you know three years ago if my fridge went down i'm going to cash express yeah you know i'm going to i'm going to have to borrow money from someone or i'm going to have to not have a fridge Mm -hmm. and you know the the peace that comes with hey at least i can afford a fridge if it breaks down yeah it it kind of frees up a lot of 
emotional energy and allows you to focus on other things because when you are in survival mode and every every waking moment is fit is spent just trying to make ends meet or just trying to find a reprieve from that some respite and and just to be able to breathe a little bit it's hard to have the it's i and i think maslow's hierarchy of needs has been uh debated a lot but like when you're worried about food shelter water mm -hmm. safety you're probably not going to actualize yeah so being able to achieve those things and get those foundations kind of allows for a little bit more. And, th and that's not the same way for everyone. Some people will, will find their meaning in the, the lowest parts of their life mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll find their creative drive. Um, but for me, it was spent doing other things for the most part. So what was the first business that you started? Smoke shop, Appalachian smoke. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you got that to a point where it was, profitable making money and then you were like oh we can probably we've got this space next to us let's mm -hmm. start something else yeah we got the coffee shop i think everyone romantic i mean you own a couple so yeah. like i think it's romanticized to own a coffee shop yeah um, and it's a big need here in Sayersville because there's where where else do you meet people you know yeah yeah and that's something that even though i've tried it is it is seldom that you know one of the hopes of the coffee shop was that people are going to utilize this i haven't had the guy that uh, installed my coffee machine say get rid of your your seated area you don't want that you know people make money driving through getting in and then out and i was like it's not just about the money right i want an environment for people to come in and sit and talk and and i think historically coffee shops were kind of the the epicenters of intellectual conversation mm -hmm. and i was like we need that here yeah and even though we have that seating seated area i'll have occasionally and it warms my heart to see someone have a business meeting mm -hmm. or just to have a good deep conversation but it is few and far between so yeah. we're, we're going to try to have more events to see if we can uh, cultivate that environment a little bit more yeah and it makes it it makes a big difference uh, when you can create that environment because i believe like through a coffee shop a lot of connections happen like new mm -hmm. connections you know stuff happens yeah. Uh, with business, mm -hmm. uh, people make big deals in coffee shops. Sure. Uh, entrepreneurs bump into each other at coffee shops. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, collaborations start to happen because coffee shops exist. Sure. Um, and it's almost like an anchor for the community. Mm -hmm. um, that's what drove me to the coffee industry, probably. Really? You know? Interesting. We've evolved you know, quite a bit since we started, but... Uh, the whole thought behind how coffee really connects people. Mm -hmm. Like my first memory of drinking coffee was just like sitting on my mom's porch and listening to her talking, yeah. you know, telling stories. Cool. So you started at a young age. Yeah. Started really young and I was like, Hmm, that's cool. And then, then you go to like, uh, you know, I grew up in the church. So it's like, you know, all the church events had coffee. So everybody's yeah. like connecting over coffee at mm -hmm. church. And then, you know, in the business world, coffee's there. You're yeah. connecting over coffee again. It's like coffee is like everywhere. I think it's a very ancient tradition amongst humans to connect over some food, food, yeah. drink, something like that. Yeah. Like that's, it's as, it's as old as humans, you know, as mm -hmm. old as culture. Mm -hmm. Um, so the fact that you're able to bring that to your area and the more things that you're doing, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's inspiring, especially yeah. what you've got going on with creator con. That's wonderful. Yeah. Are you a foodie too? No, honestly, I've been a vegetarian. I have to mention it. It took me like 10 minutes though. So this is a record for me. Um, I have been for over a decade and I think the reason it was easy for me is food isn't paramount to me. Mm -hmm. And I know that I probably wouldn't eat if I didn't have to. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think I would. It's but it's been easy to be vegetarian. I'll way. blow your mind here. So last year, July the seventh, I think is when I started. Uh, I became a vegan. No, you're vegan right now. Yeah, never mention it. Yeah, wow, that's incredible. Yep. <laughs> yep, I have not had any animal based products since then. And you you exercise a lot. Like you, yeah. You, what do you do? Uh, bodybuilding, strongman, CrossFit. Uh, Olympic, yeah. Uh, nope. Strong man. Strongest man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know, man. Like, I haven't really committed to one certain no. thing. You'll and have to. that's like um, sort of like my life in general, too. Like, I just get bored if I stay doing one single sure. thing. We Same. might be similar there. 100%. Um, 
I don't know. We talked about the Enneagram before. I'm a seven. But when sevens on the Enneagram, when they do like one certain thing over and over and over, they just get bored, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I do a mix of stuff. I go running on the trail a lot. Uh, I've got a dog, so and she's really crazy mm -hmm. and needs exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I do that. And it's good men mentally for me, too, like, you know, running businesses and stuff and, um, you know, being in the creator space. It's just like being an entrepreneur in general is just lonely yeah. a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know. So you need that space to just like, you know, uh, mentally have a have a good check. And it it's the most creative I am, too, really? usually is when I'm on a walk or run. Yeah. Uh, that's when most of my ideas come to me. I heard a quote. I can't remember exactly who it was but it was like if you want to create something and i'm, I'm not going to do this verbatim but it's like study really hard and then go to the movies yeah or, or take a shower because when you when you focus too much it's hard to see but yeah. when you can when you can get out of that space that's when something comes to you yeah 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 mm -hmm. um and so sometimes i'll shoot hoops uh, for exercise, sometimes I'll do like weightlifting a couple days a week. Yeah. So I just kind of do like a mix, but I'm doing something probably five days a week, you know? I think it's extremely important. Yeah. And to mix it up because it does get boring. I've trained strongman. I've done some CrossFit, a little bit of Olympic. Uh, I was the only person short enough in our gym that could do a, uh, a, uh, uh, what's it called? A clean and press. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And, um, because our, we had a basement gym here in McGoffin County and I was like the only one that could do that for the rafters. Uh, but yeah, uh, run the trails, bicycle a little bit. Um, yeah. They black tarped our trail now, the uh, the Dawkins Trail. Oh, nice. Well, I don't love it. You don't love it? <laughs> no, because it's harder on, on runners. It's better for cyclists. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it's harder on my, my joints. I'm very careful of that. I want to age well because there's, there's lifespan and then there's health span. Yeah. And I don't want to put too much pressure on my joints and be... For, crippled by the time i'm yeah elderly i should probably be you know more conscious of that because i can tell sometimes my knees hurt pretty bad after i run mm -hmm. yeah i'm like why am i running so much yeah yeah, yeah maybe maybe try cycling yeah. it's it's an adjustment but it's fun yeah maybe i'll just throw that in the mix you know okay. every and i really like that because especially in the summer it's like okay today i'm gonna run tomorrow i'm gonna cycle i'm breathing so heavy i can't do it i don't i'm scared um <laughs> we're both breathing so hard i think i'm trying know, to pull away in the edit though it's gonna you're not gonna be able to tell you can do some noise suppression yeah cool yeah so Good. we are breathing hard <laughs> we can hear each other breathing talking hard. about exercise makes me you know what that's an exercise for the day talk about exercise <laughs> the end <laughs> yeah that's it not going not going kayaking today <laughs> <laughs> do you kayak actually i have a kayak uh that i've used maybe three times okay <laughs> yeah i'm a big fan of buying things and not using them so, okay mm -hmm. you were pumping some iron when i pulled up earlier yeah yeah, yeah. a little bit i got the garage gym because it's so much handier than having to go to the gym because i'll I know everyone, so I'll sit and talk for an hour yeah. and not get my workout done. Gosh, that drives me crazy. Yeah. You can have you can have speakers taped to your head and people's like, Hey Bubby, <laughs> how you doing? Let's talk for an hour. Yeah. And you're like backing up to and like they're just get like to your next set. Forward. Yeah. They're walk <laughs> following you. I did uh, and when and when I go to work out, like I try to when I lift, I try to be done in thirty minutes. Yeah. And I do Absolutely. a lot in like thirty minutes. People people think you need to be in there for two or three hours. Do a thirty, forty five minute workout and you're good. Buddy. Yeah. But if I get interrupted like that, somebody's talking to me two like hours. Yeah, I'm going to be in there a while. Yeah, and when you're an entrepreneur and you've got a thousand things going through your mind at once and things to do, it's frustrating. Yeah, mm -hmm. just like, let me listen to this pod real quick yep. and get this workout done. Yep. Like, if you want to <laughs> if you want to chat for two hours, mm -hmm. uh, come to the shop. Come to the shop. Mm -hmm. Email me. Yeah. We'll set up a meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hire <laughs> you on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll get a Zoom call together. Um, um, and honestly, I remember doing that and and being frustrated and i couldn't even stand in my own i i would start avoiding my own businesses because every time i'd be there i'd see a thousand things i need to do everyone would want to talk and i couldn't pay attention yeah because i'm like oh that needs straightened up that needs clean i gotta order that so one of the beauties of empowering people to make those decisions is and i can go and sit in my own coffee shop right now put my feet up and be like They'll take care of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's good that you realize that. I mean, in the early days of starting something, you have to be involved because you, know, you have mm -hmm. to be involved very heavily. Mm -hmm. 
but it's good that you realized that you needed to delegate some of those tasks so you mm-hmm. could have some freedom to think about growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And even just to be in the moment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I that's that's such a balancing act that I'm trying to figure out right now because I I get bored easily and I want new businesses and I want new adventures and I want more jobs for people. But there has to be I used to fall prey to this and I've gotten so much better at it. But I remember before I started Appalachian Smoke, I was like, when I get one shop, I'll be happy. When I get I think it's Jeremy pulling up. Uh, when I get, oh, now I want the coffee shop. When I get the coffee shop, I'll be happy. When I get the cab company, I'll be happy. It's, it's, it, it doesn't work. You know, that, that postponing happiness doesn't work. You have to find meaning or happiness, whatever you're looking for. And meaning's probably more important because I think Jordan Peterson says it'll carry you through the unhappy times. Yeah. Life's not always going to be happy. That's yeah. the state of it. But being able to find meaning and, and purpose in today rather than the far off next goal, because as soon as you achieve it, there'll be another. Yeah, 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 for sure. So zooming out a little bit, we were talking about Sayersville for the people that are listening and watching that have no idea about Sayersville or McGoffin County. Mm-hmm. Tell them a little bit about it. Mm, let's see. I think we have, I, I think the city population, I'm not exactly correct on maybe like 1500, but the county has about 13,000. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a decent sized county. Um, in Eastern Kentucky, by the way. Yeah. East KY. Uh, there's not a lot here. I think we have like $6 generals though. So that's kind of a shout out. You know what I'm saying? Not trying to brag. <laughs> I'm not trying to impress anybody, but like we got a lot. We had like when we, our dollar general went, like I grew up in a very small town, a lot smaller than Sayersville. Really? Wow. And when a dollar a general. Were you, were you in the woods? Yeah. Hey, Sa, man. <laughs> I've Go heard there. that. Uh, you've heard of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think okay. I've been through right. it. I'm in It's in Virginia. Yeah. I probably just passed by it. H-A-Y-S-I. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, when we got a dollar general, like that was like, <laughs> we thought we were getting Walmart. 100%. It's a mini Walmart. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Carry on. Oh, um, no, it's um, the only real claim to fame that we have is the creator editor of hustler magazine larry flint is from <laughs> I saw here. your video about this man listen people hate on larry flint and uh because of the nature of the industry but like when i went to what's it called in new orleans the bourbon bourbon street uh-huh. is that it mardi gras bourbon Mar- street that area mm-hmm. um and I saw like one, maybe two hustlers. I was like, this dude's from my town. Like whether you like, love, agree with the industry or not, like he did something. And I'm like, that's dope. Yeah. And in your video, you were saying that he was going to come back here and invest money into doing something, but then the city wouldn't let him do it because. So that's a rumor that I've heard since I was a kid that he, and you hear a thousand different, there's a bunch of comments of people agreeing or, you know, hearing different versions of the story that he was going to build us some kind of sports plex and he wanted to call it. I've heard hustler stadium. We've heard Larry Flint and the, the big wigs in McGoffin wouldn't do it. I still don't know if it's true or not. I have no idea. So we need the internet to s- solve this. Yeah, if you can figure first. out if Larry Flint had, um, I need called Dusty, his nephew. Uh, he's got a couple shops, and ask him if that was ever true or not. But if you guys <laughs> can figure out if Larry Flint ever wanted to build something in McGoffin and, and the powers that be wouldn't let him, please let us know. I'm super <laughs> interested in that story. Jeremy just uh, just messaged me on Facebook. Hang on, he no was like, "Hey, like, there's is a dog it, bark. <laughs> is it the Victory Temple Church van in the driveway?" <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's my serial killer van. Yep. <laughs> yes, it is <laughs> church van. That's like the best. That purchase and the robot vacuums, the best two purchases I've ever made in my life. All right. So uh, going back to your businesses, um, what are some of the challenges that you've faced as a business owner? Because a lot of people, when they see you as a business owner, um, you know, owning multiple businesses, everybody just thinks that it's just like easy because mm-hmm. we you make it look easy. Sure. You know what I mean? It's uh, people don't see all the hard times you go through and and things like that and Gosh, it is not easy running a business at all, especially by, retail. By no means. Um, my biggest, my biggest difficulty is my own nerves. Yeah. My my own anxieties about the future has been the worst thing, because um, honestly, I feel like if you James Clear talks about this in 
in um, Atomic Habits, and he's like, every each team has the same goal, and it's to win. But if you stare at the if you stare at the scoreboard the whole time, that's not going to help. You know, it's the systems that you put in place and to trust the process. It's like if you're putting in the effort, maybe your business will fail. Mm -hmm. Like that happens. Um, but you have to be able to adjust. But as someone that catastrophizes regularly, every if we had a if we had a bad day in sales if we if we lost an employee um if there was some competition like i was like it's over it's it's yeah. done and one of the reasons that i start other businesses is because of that fear so it's served me and it's not served me so my i like having i never want to be an emt again i never mm -hmm. want to be living in a dilapidated trailer again and so i want all these different streams of revenue that if one goes down I've got contingency A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah. But my own fear has, I guess, helped and hurt. As far as staffing goes, been pretty lucky. I've only had to fire um, one person in three years. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I've been very blessed. But you have to treat your people well, um, pay them as best as you can. Yeah. Uh, I know plenty of people that have the business model of like, like Dollar General. It's like pay them or at least the ones I've seen around here, um, you know, pay people the least you can get by. You've got a high turnover rate. It, it doesn't matter. Um, there's still people right. <laughs> like, and right. people need a good wage. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was an EMT, I started out eight fifty an hour and then made it up to nine seventy five. Then they cut us down to like eight seventy seven, And, um, it's really hard to live. You know, I was in a revolving, uh, credit line with Cash Express, and, Gosh. and and they still call me to this day. They're like, "I need your money." And, <laughs> so um, you would go get uh, cash from them, uh, and then you would pay it back as quick as you could, and just keep that revolving. I think every two weeks. So like, I'd I'd borrow five hundred and I'd pay five eighty eight or something back. Um, it's a good business model. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they make a they make a fortune. It seems predatory uh, to people in poverty. Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there, but, but yeah, I was in a revolving line with them. Um, but yeah, my own nerves, my own nerves is, is really hurt me a lot. Yeah. But you're starting to figure that out. It seems I'm getting better. Yeah. You know, getting better in trust in the process and having contingencies, A, B, C, D, E, and, um, hiring good staff, empowering them and let the chips fall. I mean, how many, there's so many stories about, you know, I'm getting ready to start this mini donut truck. It could fail. Yeah. It's a calculated risk, but it's still a risk and every business is. But how many, you know, failed, what was it, J.K. Rowling was denied the Harry Potter series by so many publishers. Um, Colonel Sanders was like in his 60s mm -hmm. until he founded the first KFC. Like, you may fail. If you're going to start a business, you may. And, and, and it's not even necessarily failing if you learn from it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, I mean, I love that about business. Like we, we failed a bunch along the way, but that's the only way you can learn. Get better at failing, fell up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's yeah. what they say about comedy. You know, fail get, fast. Yep. Fell fast. And get, get in and fell as fast as you can, as much as you can. And, uh, fell up, uh, learned to bomb. Like you're going to learn something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about TikTok real quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reason you and I know each other is because of TikTok. Mm -hmm. If you remember. Yep. Because you made a post, is it was it two years ago that you were starting Prohibition? Uh, we're almost at our one year anniversary. But you were working on it two years ago, probably. Yeah, yeah. Because I yeah. rented the space out for a long time. Yeah, and uh, just took you know really um, twiddled my thumbs getting it done. Yeah. So you put something on TikTok that hey, I'm opening up a coffee shop in Sayersville, mm -hmm. and uh, one of uh, one of my friends that actually works for, uh, works for my wife was like, uh, tagged us mm -hmm. in it, air of Lincoln road coffee roaster. And was like, Hey, uh, you should talk to them. Yep. And 100%. that's how we got connected, which is nuts Networking to me buddy. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we've known each other for well over a year, mm -hmm. uh, and have done a lot of business together, 100%. um, and helped each other a lot sure. for sure. Um, but let's talk about your TikTok channel some because it is exploding right now yeah it's 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 doing well um i uh would you like the origin story i would love that so originally years ago uh, i always fancied myself a facebook comedian and um 
I would post just whatever joke I thought was funny on Facebook. And I kind of became known for it. Like people started knowing who I was based on just outlandish things I'd post on Facebook. And I started doing something called the Appalachian Word of the Day, Appalachian Idiom of the Day. And that was spawned from my love of our language, of the Appalachian dialect and lexicon. And I would just kind of, even from a young age, I would hear some word that like an, an, an older Appalachian would say. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> and some things, you know, you, you wouldn't even question it. it. Just It's so ingrained in you. But I started, I had a lot of friends from a lot of different places. And I was like, let's, let's explain to people what this means with a funny little example. And it was interesting because as a kid, I felt the need to lose my accent. Mm -hmm. And I felt that a, a lot of people think that, you know, they associate a, a thick accent with being unintelligent. And, yeah. And, and I think that's not true. So anyone, if they're, if you are listening to this, you don't need to lose your accent. I actually love people that kind of don't fit into that box. It's yeah. like, you'll hear them. And I've got some, some stand up comedy bits about it. You'll hear someone say something seemingly intelligent or, or very intelligent or deep, but they talk like this right sure. And yeah. love that because it's so far removed from the stereotype. But eventually as a kid, people were like, where are you from? Oh, hi, Michigan. And I got tired of that. And I was like, I'll just talk like a banjo covered in gravy bowls. <laughs> and then started the Facebook. And um, it's actually interesting what, what got me on TikTok is there was some, some video and the guy lived not in McGoffin, but it's somewhere around here. And he posted some little little tidbit of of comedy and it blew up and i was mad and i was i was mad at myself because i was like i can do that and there's a fear that's stopping me uh -huh. that for some reason i will not put myself out there and i was mad at myself for a long time i was like why won't you just do it why won't you just do it what's stopping you what's stopping you because he, this is this is in the same vein as what you do do it and then I started posting and um, the first couple videos were huge and then they weren't. And they, they, it was, it went from like 200, like a quarter million views to like 60 to like a thousand. And it was disheartening. And maybe that's part of the algorithm. I, I don't know how that works. Yeah, exactly. But I started doing more Appalachian words of the day. Uh, these characters I created, um, Mammal, Scooter, Skeeter, Drackler, what have you. And then it sort of just took on a life of its own. Yeah. That I've always heard people say things like that have created characters and they they speak from a s space like they don't exactly know all the inner workings of the character. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense. You created it. Yeah, but they take on a life of their own. Yeah. And things will just kind of happen. Yeah. Do you create all most of those videos up here? Or like, is other people around when you're doing it? Or is it just you mainly? It just depends on the spot. You know, a lot of things I'll film outside the shop. So there's, there's a lot of videos with the Dollar General. <laughs> in my, in, in and some shop. are like in, in your shops too. Yep. And I was always wondering, it's like, are there, are there people in there? Usually. <laughs> yeah. Some people, some people have sent me Snapchats of like me filming as they drive by. And I'll be like in a wig and booty shorts and a thong or something. And it's always fun to see. Uh, but yeah, just wherever, wherever is most appropriate. That mammal or, or case is hilarious. I love mammal. Yeah. Big, big fan of, big fan of mammal. But Drac is Drackler your most popular character? Is that one yes. of your most popular videos? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. Drackler. I love Drackler. And honestly, it's, it's, I mean, it's not, how can I say this? Things like that have been done before. Like, it's not uncommon to what I call Appalachia or southern fry something um almost like an archetype mm -hmm. um or some other popular character yeah and i i think so like appalachian twilight which had drackler in it like i believe there's a wealth of of content there of just taking something and then appalachifying it put yeah. that put that kind of twist on it and it I, I think it's funny i really like drackler as a character and there's a lot more planned for it. But lately I've been, I've been inconsistent after I opened for Donnie Baker and I got like a hundred thousand followers. It was almost like I let off the gas. Yeah. Did it scare you a little bit or is that why you let off the gas or like, why, why wouldn't you put the, on the accelerator after a show like that? You'd think that would be the, you know, that's pretty intuitive thing to do. Um, 
I don't think it scared me necessarily. Maybe um, I'll have to unpack that a little bit more as I breathe very deeply. <laughs> um, um, it was like I'd hit a benchmark. It's like I'd hit a goal. Yeah. And after that goal, I was like, it's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like I bought this house and like in a year I've done almost nothing to it. Uh -huh. Like it was like, I hit it. I'm good. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, and then I, I don't know if I've, I, part of me has wanted to shift gears, but I want to get back into that. And there's, there's a really good book I might recommend called the war of art uh -huh. by Stephen Pressfield. And essentially, essentially it's just about just doing the work, man, just yeah. treat it like a job, you know, put in an hour, yeah. two hours, three hours, whatever it takes, but do it every single day. Right. And that's, that's what, if I could give advice to any creators, it'd be that. Yeah. It's just, you know, don't suffer from analysis paralysis, which is so many people do. They're like, oh, I want it to be perfect and I wanted this. And so don't. Right. I um I signed up for this. It's a not just a workshop, it's kind of like a an online community for creators. It's called Creator Now. And for breathing so Oh wow. Hard. Now that we've brought attention to it, I can't <laughs> So I'm telling you, we'll, we'll be able to, we'll be able to denoise it a little bit. <laughs> Make um, it louder. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I joined this uh, thing as a member, uh, creator now, and it gives you like accountability tools to like keep you posting. Mm -hmm. um, and so like right now I'm in this like um, shorts challenge for April and I've got like two more shorts that I need to post to like hit that challenge nope. and get like, uh, they call it coins. So when you collect so many coins, uh, then you can go use those coins for like certain pieces of content cool. that are going to help you out for the next thing. Good rewards. Yeah. And then I'm in like a long form challenge. And so it's like posting one long form video, like once a week, Yeah, you know? Uh, so I'm trying to be in there and learn from other people and you're in there with other startup creators mm -hmm. basically. And you're learning from, uh, major creators, you know, from like Yes Theory, which has millions of subscribers, uh, Eric, uh, Mr. Beast, yeah. you know, some like major creators are on that platform. Um, so that's a, a good tool that could potentially help, mm -hmm. uh, at least hold you accountable. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly around YouTube, but I think that there might be a TikTok component as well. I'd have to look into that. But it's a it's a pretty cool thing, and then people can roast your videos too. Yeah. So you submit your videos, and like people roast them, Fun. and you get feedback. Yeah. And, yeah it's kind of cool. Well, I think just surrounding yourself with you know, if you want to be a certain way, surround yourself with people that are already that way. Yeah. It's kind of that. Is it Tim Ferriss that says you're the average of the five people you interact with most? Yeah. Like hanging out with people like you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or other content creators, other entrepreneurs makes me want to do that more right it's inspiring motivation it's motivational but like it just gets your brain thinking in a different way yeah and that, that's a that's another quick aside i've noticed like when i'm in the headspace to create i'm writing jokes constantly yeah 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 when i go back to like business mode entrepreneurship I really don't write many jokes. Uh -huh. So it, so much of it's about that headspace. Right. Right. Yeah. And I, you know, one reason why I cr created this conference creator con is to really try to get some more of these creators like yourself, more entrepreneurs, uh, which you're both, uh, which is awesome, uh, to get more people like that in a room so they know each other. Mm -hmm. So then you can hold each other accountable yep, yep, yep. Uh, mm -hmm. and you can chat with one another. Yep. If you've got a problem, you can text me, which, mm -hmm. you know, we've been doing that sure, for sure. Uh, over a year. Um, and it's it's awesome to have that support system 100%. of people that are in similar fields as you are, yeah. you know? Yeah, pick each other's brain because, you know, I have I maybe have encountered a problem that you will or vice versa, and we can help each other out. Yeah. Have you uh, – I reached out to this TikToker. She's over in Johnson County. She's a forager. I applied for forager. Yeah. Um, Do you uh, know her? No, I can't remember her name, but she's – Do you know her? Do you, did a video, do you do a video with her? Yeah. She's huge. Her following's like – well, it's well, it's well over half a million, I think. Yeah. Because little bubby child's at right at half a million on TikTok, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Shout out little bubby child. Yeah. Shout out. Uh, um. But yeah, she's she's killing it, right? Yeah. She's mm -hmm. doing awesome. 
Yeah, that's great. She'll probably be the first pe- person around here, I'd think, to hit a million followers on TikTok. Yeah. If there isn't someone already, but I don't know of anyone else. Uh, there's, you know, there's Ryan Hall. Oh, oh, yeah. It depends on what you mean by around here. I guess yeah, that's he's got over two million. Really? So that's, mm-hmm. that's yeah, that's still our area, 100%. Yeah. Being like Appalachia, it's like there are people like her, like him, like all over the place. And we don't, why don't we know each other? Yeah, there's Andy Marie. Do you know who I'm talking about? I think that's her name. And then there's the Appalachian Sun. I've talked to him a little bit on TikTok. He's cool. Yeah. Um, but there are these people that are like these hot spots that are are blowing up. But yeah, why why don't we all? I don't know. Have a Zoom call. We we should. That, that, that and I'm trying to find all those people. Who are they? Mm-hmm. And then like let's get them all together sure, sure in one place. Yeah. Because really, you can if somebody's already getting brand deals or something like that, you can really play off each other and help each other out, make connections Network is everything, and make it just make it bigger as a whole, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and then you end up like Mr. Beast and you have, you know, thousand you're, employees. You're a superpower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Making a billion dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm always down for more money. <laughs> uh, your experience with Donnie Baker, what was that like? Uh, Donnie was cool. Um, just being able Do you to know him by first name basis now? You call him Donnie or Don? Uh, D man. D. Uh, yeah, just he call, D. He calls me J Dog. No, we spoke for like five minutes. If that. Did you hug him? Uh, I gave. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know what I can say on this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just to be continued. To be real. <laughs> part. You gotta watch part two of this video. Donnie Baker's gonna be like he's slandering me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Subscribe. Head over to Patreon. Pay $10 to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> it's just a video of me crying. <laughs> tied In up. the fetal position, <laughs> tied up. Um, yeah, I just talked to him for a few minutes. It was just cool to be able to open for someone that's, you know, pretty famous. Like, you know, he, he's been around for really famous. Bob and Tom, you know, I've seen him on Facebook for years and just to be able to be like, Oh, I got to open for this dude. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. yeah. And after achieving that, I was like, I've done something. Yeah. And, and it, it felt, it felt great. Did they pay you or did you just I made $50 and which is, I, 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 I wouldn't have cared if they gave me a dollar. I was like, I'm technically a paid comedian yeah and the first time i made like a dollar on tiktok i was like i'm a pay i'm a professional content creator and that was is validating yeah are you gonna did you get some content while you were there like videos and stuff i got very little uh and i in retrospect i wish i'd planned on having someone record but man i was so nervous i bet like i was a nervous (laughs) wreck and then once i got on stage it was it was fine. Like I was able to navigate and, you know, there was like a joke that I cut out. I was like, they're not feeling it. So I didn't continue down that path and just switched over to another one. But like it, it really was, it was wonderful to cool. be able, It's very, very few experiences like stand up and just, just killing a room. Yeah. Do you like doing stand up? I do. Um, it's fun. It's just, it takes a toll on me because it is so new uh-huh. that so like for the two or three weeks prior, I think it was about two weeks prior to when I agreed to open for him every waking moment. That's all I thought about. And that was, it was heavy. You know, yeah. it really did weigh a lot on me and I'm sure the more I did it, it would become second nature just like mm-hmm. anything. And just you'd fall into it and it wouldn't bother me anymore. And it's going to take that repetition. But yeah. like those, those sets, they, there was a lot of pressure that I put on myself Yeah. at the end of the day. And for anyone aspiring to be a comedian, just do it. You're going to bomb. I bombed. I've done great. I bombed. I've done mediocre. Like you have to get used to it. Yeah. Do you prefer making the TikTok videos? Making a TikTok video is less pressure, but less reward. Yeah. Um, the feeling of killing a room versus the feeling of getting millions of views. It's very different. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many millions of views do you have on TikTok currently? Do you know? I don't know how to read the views. It's it's a couple million likes. Um, I'm sure it's well over, I'd say, 10, 10 plus million views yeah. for sure. Because some, some videos, you know, went viral. And uh, yeah, it, that's another interesting thing to just be like, hey, there's millions of people that's seen my face. 
and cool. and the support for anyone else like afraid to put out content at least for me the support's been overwhelming yeah like i can count the number of negative comments on one hand that's and, awesome and thousands and thousands of people in so much support yeah i looked around your youtube channel your youtube channel last night and you're getting some traction on there too now man honestly i'm not am i yeah <laughs> because i've not posted on there one, in a long time. one video was uh i mean youtube and tiktok are way you can go viral way easier on tiktok for sure uh, but you had like 5,000 or 6,000 views on one of your really? videos on I didn't YouTube <laughs> and several of them have over a thousand or 2,000. What's considered viral on YouTube, you think? With shorts? Mm, it's hard to say, man, you know? Yeah. I mean, I feel good if I get like, you know, a thousand, 2,000 views sure. on a short. Sure. But I mean, if you're really going to go viral, you know, over a million views probably is yeah. viral. Yeah. When you're thinking about a short, I would say. Yeah. And I, I've not been focusing on YouTube as much as I probably would like to. Yeah. Uh, because there's, it's a different beast. Mm -hmm. But like TikTok's just, it's pretty natural for me. Yeah. Uh, but as far as if you're looking to make money, TikTok doesn't pay well. Right. Um, YouTube evidently pays well. Uh, but, you know, anytime you can, something you, know, me, you and I have talked about, if you've got a following, that's all it takes. <laughs> you can sell anything. 100%. There, there's a book, um, Superfans. Um, I didn't finish it, but, like, you don't need to get everyone's business. If you've got a 1,000 people that will spend $100 a year, you've got a $100,000 business. Mm -hmm. it's, it's attainable. Yeah. And this is something we talked about. We can just get the, get this out here right now to the public. Drackler Coffee. Man, I've been meaning to dress up as Drackler forever and go out there. But yeah, we maybe do we'll just do it today. Okay, yeah, I'm sure I got my. I'm sure I got my. Uh, I can. I can I holler can, Drackler. I can wear another wig and be another character. <laughs> sure. Just make something up. But. I've, I've got a whole sketch planned, and like, you you could be the the <laughs> counterpoint to it. There you uh, go. But yeah, Drackler Coffee, uh, where you're gonna white label some coffee bean Drackler's Brew. Drackler's right. Brew. Drackler's there you Brew. go. So Different roast. Yep. Uh, ground or whole bean. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing it. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're yeah. just going to freaking do it. If you want to support the Drackler character or my comedy, this way you get you get sort of a lot of bang for your buck. It's really good coffee, and it's a great way for you to monetize your channel, so sure. you can be doing more of this. I think that you know a little bit of that would motivate you to make more videos. Sure, because you know focus is something that is that is hard for me. Yeah, and you know getting getting my ass in the seat and putting out the content is it's I have so many projects and my focus goes so many different ways and I've got all these different businesses and and ideas for businesses like now I want to do a mini donut truck and I don't know what'll be next yeah but I think like we talked about before you know small businesses help your community but if you've got a huge following and can bring in more revenue imagine what else we could do yeah yeah and uh, it's kind of like I listen to the Colin and Samir a lot and they talk about, you know, the traditional form of entrepreneurship is you create a product or you create a business uh, and you develop something and then you go get the audience to then sell them what you created, your solution, um, which is your business. Uh, and then the creator business, which gets the audience first and then adapts to the audience, listens to the audience and then makes a product that the audience wants. Interesting. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's sort of how like Ryan Hall went about what he did. Cause he didn't, uh, with his weather channel, didn't always have a shop online. I don't think, I mean, he's been on the internet, you know, selling stuff on the internet for a long time and been on YouTube, but you know, he grabbed the audience pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, and now has, you know, well over a million subscribers and the dude can just, whatever he puts on the website, Close his up. following just buys it yep, yep, yep. no matter what price it is sure. Sure, sure, sure. you know it's insane yep um yeah you do coffee for him don't you nader beans yeah mm -hmm. that's dope and he i mean he sells a lot of it too you know um and he's even thinking about you know diving deeper into that brand and um even having like a separate website for it you know tidying up the packaging a lot more yep. and focusing on that a little bit more. And so what I like about that is that, you know, it's, it is connected to his channel, but it's not called 
Ron Hall Y'all Coffee. Yeah. It, it's something that can live on after Ron Hall Y'all yeah. is not a part of Ron Hall Y'all anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's a company that can live on just yeah. like, uh, you know, Mr. Beast has Feastables or uh, Mr. Beast Burger. Mm-hmm. Like those companies can live on and grow and, and don't need the creator necessarily yeah. to be sustainable. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, the channel itself without the creator, then that's going to look a little bit different, sure, you know? Sure. Yeah. I think just giving people, I like that. You, you, you grow the audience and then what do y'all want? Right. Here you go. We'll do it. Yeah. And you know, we're trying to figure that out. Um, and at Lincoln road, we're trying to, we're, we're going to focus a lot more on, you know, short form vertical growing our YouTube audience and, uh, really trying to, to do more content yeah. and more video content consistently. Cause we haven't done it. We go in and out kind of like you do. It's like yeah. you get distracted, Yeah. but yeah. then you're really creative. So then you go make a video, mm-hmm. uh, but then you got more distractions to deal with. Yeah. So it's like, you know, yeah. And like, it's, it's much better to, to whole ass one thing than a half ass yeah, a yeah. couple. Yeah. You can, um, you can achieve more, but I, I I do get distracted. Put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. Whole ass. <laughs> Whole ass everything. That's my new tagline. <laughs> and uh, it's spelled W-H-O-L-E. Mm-hmm. Whole ass. <laughs> <laughs> Whole ass, you asshole. It would be A-S-S-W-H-O-L-E. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Very good. Hello, fellow assholes. <laughs> All right. We're coming to the end here. What are some uh, future plans, goals, uh, business-wise, creator-wise? Um. Probably the math lab, I'd say. The- oh, that's a good one. <laughs> you got a good spot for that, too, by the way. <laughs> We're not going to give away his address, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it I, could I, be a hot spot. 100%. Real hot. <laughs> the explosion. I'm not good at chemistry. Um, I guess focus more on creating. And breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably do some mindfulness meditation about breathing techniques. Um, the, I sound like I'm doing the Wim Hof method <laughs> on here. Um yeah, just keep making small businesses and trying to give back to the community and keep creating more content. I think those two things serve me in different ways. Yeah. And, you know, comedy comedy and business are both passions of mine and and creating things. So just do more of that. Keep doing more of what I'm doing, trying to bring more jobs to community and do more fun stuff. It's awesome, man. There needs to be more people like you in this community. And there could be more people that you like, you know, out here. But And they're very well, I'd say there's a lot of people that could, but they're they're not putting the foot forward like I did for a long time. You know? Yeah. I didn't, so. You've been pretty aggressive with really uh, investing in your community, which is, I think, is a noble thing to do. Uh, I, pre- I think with all the businesses, we employ about 20 people. Right yeah. Now, and um, I love that. I love that we can we can help 20 people feed their family or yeah. do the things that they want to do with their lives. And, and it's, it's a really good feeling to feel like I'm making a, an impact. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah, thanks. Well, thanks for being here, dude. Yeah. Appreciate house, it. So I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> His house is nice. We're, we're actually going to send him off and Jeremy and I are just going <laughs> to hang out. Live here. Yeah. That's cool. Um, how was the Celsius? It's very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's orangey. Shout out Celsius for uh, sending sending a couple you're, cases of product. You're trying to, oh, you might should cut this because I don't know that they'll like this. You ever, you ever took Suboxone? No. It tastes like Suboxone strips. <laughs> 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 and there you have it ladies and gentlemen that's my audience right there <laughs> <laughs> another episode of adventures in business stay tuned for part two of this video uh <laughs> we're going to be torn around uh justin's house his businesses and seeing how he sort of creates his videos as well so stick around for that thanks for watching